Hello everyone, welcome to GoVM Lab VMware scenario based interview question and answer series. As we have mentioned many times that this series of lectures will help our learners and professionals preparing for VMware L3 or senior level profile interviews. Now you if you are following us throughout this lecture series, you might have noticed that we have been keep discussing about some of the very basic topics of vSphere networking and we have tried to give the message to our learners that just doing the configuration at the vCenter UI is not good enough. You as a VMware administrator, you as a VMware architect, you as a VMware consultant have to make sure that your network has to be aligned with the physical network configurations as well. If you do not do the right mapping between your virtual networking and the physical networking, you do see the results which you never expected. And that's what the objective of this entire lecture series, what we are having it or what we have prepared for our learners. So now let's look at the question number 10 and let's find out the problem statement given in this question number 10. So with that, let's get started. So now here is our question number 10. And let's try to understand the networking layout given in this particular scenario. So now here again, we have a VM1 which is connected to VM network port group of your virtual switch zero. And this virtual switch is actually having three uplinks connected to it. VM NIC zero, VM NIC one and VM NIC two. And we know that as when our virtual switch is configured with more than one uplink, we call that configuration as a teaming configuration, which means that our virtual switch is configured in a teaming mode. Now, this is what our virtual world is all about it. So this is here, it's all about virtual network, right? That's your virtual networking or vSphere networking. But then you, you really need to understand the physical networking as well, or you really need to understand the physical networking layout, how it has been done, because when you talk about the packet level details. When you really try to understand how your packet flows in this virtual world, you can't say that I just have done the things at the virtual networking level because ultimately you are ensuring the end to end network connectivity and you can't say that I have done the things at the virtual networking level. So if the packet goes out from my virtual network, I am done. No, you as a VMware administrator, as an architect, as a con consultant have to make sure that you make sure end-to-end -end network connectivity and for that reason you not only need to assess your virtual network but you also need to assess your physical networking as well because till here if the packet is coming and let's say it leaves your virtual network boundary but what if it get dropped here itself then your outcome is same the network connectivity is getting impacted right and that's where you have to make sure that it should not break any network connectivity right and that's the whole idea of designing a reliable resilient network. So now till here, it's all about the virtual networking. Now let's try to assess the physical networking. So if you really see that VMNIC zero is connected to its own dedicated access switch named as AS1 and that access switch is connected to its own dedicated distribution switch named as DS1. Similarly, VMNIC one uplink is connected to its own dedicated access switch named as AS2 and it is also connected to its dedicated distribution switch named as DS2. VMNIC2 is connected to its own dedicated access switch named as AS3 and this access switch is also connected to its own dedicated distribution switch named as DS3. So now this is how our network configuration looks like and all these distribution switches DS1, DS2, DS3 are connected to a very common core switch. This is how your left side VM1 networking layout looks like. Now similarly if you look at the VM2, so VM2 is connected to VM network port group that VM network port group is connected to virtual switch one. This virtual switch one is having a two uplink connectivity VMNIC two and VMNIC three, which means that this V switch one is also configured in a teaming mode. And then your VMNIC two and VMNIC three uplink of this particular V switch one is connected to a common switch named as access switch two. And this access switch two is connected to its own dedicated distribution switch named as DS4 and this DS4 is also connected to a common core switch. So this is how your virtual and physical networking layout looks like. Now let's try to see the network policies what VMware administrator has configured it. So now if you really look at the network policies, the network policy says that the administrator has configured teaming policy 
that's pretty obvious because our virtual switch is having more than one physical uplink which means by default it's a teaming configuration but the policy what has been configured by vmware administrator is explicit failover order now when you define explicit failover order you have to define active standby adapter so vmnic 0 is going to be active adapter vmnic 1 and vmnic 2 is going to be standby adapter and this almost looks exactly same what we have been keep discussing in the last few questions now what is the failure detection the failure detection is configured as beacon probing so beacon probing is going to be our failure detection mechanism so that's what pretty much from the vSphere networking policy configuration standpoint now let's look at the problem statement what the problem statement has been given here the problem statement says that in a given scenario vm1 is connected to v switch 0 of your esxi one host so this vm1 is connected to v switch 0 of your esxi one host and this host communicates with vm2 connected to v switch 1 of esxi two host so this vm1 is actually communicating with vm2 connected to vSwitch1 of ESXi2 host what would be the uplink status of VMNIC0, VMNIC1 and VMNIC2 if the uplink between DS1 and core switch goes down will there be any impact on VM1 and VM2 network connectivity so now if you really look at this particular problem statement the problem statement looks exactly same what we have been keep discussing in the last uh, few scenarios that what will happen or what would be the link status of vmnic0 vmnic1 and vmnic2 if the uplink between distribution switch 1 and the core switch goes down it could it could happen because of many reasons for example let's say this switch went down there is a power failure on your ds1 switch maybe someone pulled out the cable from that particular switch port right so that's where basically your link can go down so link between distribution switch one and the core switch can goes down for n number of reasons but the question here is that if that particular link goes down will there be any impact on vm1 and vm2 network connectivity and what will be the status of these vmnic0 vmnic1 and vmnic2 uplink in the event of link failure now i would suggest our learners take a pause here and try to analyze the scenario and try to find out the scenario of this particular given question so now let's try to find out the answer of this particular scenario and if you really look at this particular scenario this particular scenario everything looks good from the vmware networking configuration perspective and everything looks good from the physical networking configuration perspective so if you ask me from the configuration perspective from the design perspective everything looks good in this particular given scenario because as a vmware administrator you have configured your virtual switch with three uplinks to make sure that your vm network connectivity remains intact if any of the uplink goes down and for that reason you have configured teaming second thing you have also configured failover detection as beacon probing because you are not only want to protect your virtual network only from the immediate link failure but you also want to protect your virtual network from the upstream switch failure as well and that's the reason beacon probing configurations what you as a vmware administrator has done it looks absolutely fine from the configuration standpoint and then you have configured vmnic 0 as active vmnic 1 and vmnic 2 as a standby also looks absolutely fine from the configuration standpoint so everything looks good from the virtual networking perspective or vSphere networking perspective i would say everything looks good now let's look at the physical networking perspective the way physical network has been laid out in this given scenario it also looks good from the physical network perspective so everything looks good from the virtual network everything looks good from the physical networking standpoint and that is the reason in this particular given scenario if this particular link goes down there is no worry because beacon probing what you have configured it here will be able to detect this particular failure it will inform the kernel that please mark this uplink as down and immediately kernel will mark this uplink as down and this vmnic1 in the team will become an active adapter and earlier where the traffic was going through this uplink it will be failover to vmnic1 and that's how your traffic path would be so in this particular scenario what would be the uplink status of vmnic0 vmnic1 and vmnic2 if the link goes down the answer should be this would be down because beacon probing 
is able to detect the failure in this given scenario the kernel got this information from the beacon probing detect the failure and then it has marked this particular adapter as down vmnic1 will be promoted as an active adapter in the team and vmnic2 will remain standby so that would be the final uplink status of vmnic0 vmnic1 and vmnic2 the second question is that will there be any impact on vm1 and vm2 connectivity the answer is that there will be no packet loss there will be no impact on vm1 and vm network connectivity because beacon probing in this given scenario is able to detect the failure and the vm kernel is able to mark this adapter is down and all the traffic which was earlier going through vmnic0 will be fail over to vmnic1 and traffic will flow without any issue so the answer to this question is in this given scenario there will be no packet loss no network connectivity will be broken between vm1 and vm2 so now as you could see that we have been keep preferring almost similar scenario almost similar networking policies but still we have seen the results were different and that's what my message to every learner of go vm lab that just doing the things at the ui is not good enough you really need to understand you really need to analyze the given networking scenario the layout of your networking and then based on that you configure your policies make sure that your virtual policies are in align with physical networking policies and once you do that mapping the alignment that's where you can make sure that or you can assure that your entire uh, vm where vsphere networking or your workload networking is completely intact and and that's where you can assure that your application what you have designed on your virtual infrastructure will remain intact and you have designed a resilient a very a reliable network for your virtual machine applications so that's what you have to assure it if you have interest in learning vmware more in depth not from a administration perspective but from the architect or consulting perspective then join our VMware vSphere Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Program. This particular program has been highly rated by all of our learners. 100 plus careers have been transitioned successfully with our Zero to Hero Data Center Expert Deep Dive Program with the 100% placement record. Now, what are the key highlights of this program? As you could see that it's a India's first job ready VMware learning program, which has a 70 hours of intense learning with the 80 plus hands-on labs, 40 plus scenarios would be presented to a learner as a challenge questions to assess their learning. We do have a mentors having a 15 years of experience and the certified professionals. You would be getting opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one in-person doubt clarification session with the VMware mentor. And this particular zero to hero program will also preparing learners for L3 or senior level profiles. Now we have transitioned many careers with our deep dive program and you can see some of the feedbacks right here on your screen. These are the feedbacks what we have received from all of our successful learners who has transitioned their career with us. So what are you waiting for? If you want to become VMware expert or want to master this technology, then call us now today on the given number or maybe drop us email on the provided email address. Thank you.